Today in the Chipple Spotlight, brand new from Tooltop, the ET14S IR camera, multimeter, and so much more. And a big keep on testing shout out to Tooltop. Thanks so much for sending the ET14S in for this review. You guys rock. So what do you get in the box? Well, hey, first of all, let's start with that box. Good looking box, isn't it? Tells you exactly what you're getting. There is that gorgeous ET14S monitor. You're also getting two manuals, one in Mandarin and one in English. And the manual is actually very verbose. Tiny font, but um, you know, there's a lot to this camera. So they got to put a lot into a little space. All the specs, some nice colorized images. All in all, really decent job for the most part. Now there's a few, you know, spelling errors, what have you, but generally speaking, it's okay. Now there was something I needed clarification on and I'll get to that a little later. Hey, you even get a really good looking case. Check it out. Now we don't have that Tooltop logo. Why Tooltop? I wanna see your logo there. But other than that, pretty decent looking case with, of course, USB-C charging cable because this is a rechargeable meter slash thermal camera and you get your tooltop test probes. All in all, pretty good. On the left, of course, we have the older ET13S. Well, older, come on, not that old. And on the right, we have the new ET14S. Different body style uh, completely, I gotta say. One thing that really stands out is the texture now. Here on the 13S, it's got that plasticky feel, which is, you know, meh. But on the 14S, much more, you know, rubberized, a good grippy uh, feeling. All in all, much nicer to hold. And they made a big, big, big improvement. We got a tilt stand. We finally have a tilt stand, folks. Check it out with a little groove to open it up just like so. And we even had some teeth on that tilt stand. I don't know what that's for exactly, uh, but interesting. Anyway, we have a tilt stand. So that is a huge, huge improvement. Now, another big improvement, a huge improvement is the way this thing is powered. Hey, the old one had a 3.7 volt lithium with that weird cable connector inside. Painful if you want to change it. The new one, 18650. Easily replaceable. Hey, if you have any of those lying around, they're all going to work in your 14S. So upgrading to the 1650 as opposed to the old style lithium, man, what a bonus. Hey, another big bonus. Look at the macro lens. Now this one was held on by a couple of magnets and you know, sometimes the magnets can get loose, come off, whatever. The new one, now this is an option, mind you, I think it's like 10, 15 bucks extra, but the new one has that built-in macro. You simply slide it over and you're suddenly in the macro zone. So permanently attached, no worrying about magnets getting lost in space. Oh, good job. Another bonus with the new unit is the fact you now have current. Yes, current up to 10 amps as opposed to no current on the older 13S. Okay, we're gonna do the venerable boot up test. Let's see which one is faster. Now they both have an option to boot either into the IR thermal camera mode or the multimeter mode. Multimeter mode. I've selected multimeter uh, just to make it fair. So slightly different. We've got to hold down on the power button on the left here. Here it's right in the front of the screen. Three, two, one. Bada boom, bada bing. Whoa, that was fast. I'm gonna give it though, <laughs> just by an inch to the little 13S, but man, I'm, we're talking like what, a second, half a second? Definitely, definitely fast. Now, there's been lots of good in terms of the upgrades. One thing that I think is a bit of a downgrade is the fact that we have gone from a touch screen to uh, no longer a touch screen. No, you have to use these up and down arrows as your function keys. No longer is it touch screen compatible on the new version. Ugh. Taking a look at precision voltage right now, we wanna look at 5.000 volts. Awfully close, 5.001. Now let's do the same thing, but for a 10 volt precision reference. And there we go, 10.00 volts. Looking good. So once again, to cycle through the ranges here, no longer touch screen, we have to use the up and down arrow on the side. 
So temperature, frequency, live wire, NCV, current, volts, resistance, continuity, diode, capacitance, and temperature. So it's all there. You just got to use the side selector. Of course, we have dual temperature. Here we are, 57 degrees in the studio, which equates to around 15. Yeah, it's a little chilly in here. Actually, it's minus 30 degrees Celsius. Oh, it's cold outside. But yeah, anyway. So um, there you go. Now, that screen is really easy on the eyes. Very, very nice. Uh, very crisp. Good color saturation, the whole nine yards. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. All right, we're sitting in dialed mode now. Here we go, starting off with red LED. Lit with a Ford voltage drop over the green. Two for two. Yellow, looking good. Uh, that's the rainbow. Anyway, let's go over to the white. Yeah. Are we going to be five for five? Yes, we are. Lit with a Ford voltage drop. Awesome. Standard diodes, not a problem. And listen to that. Yeah, we get a nice audible beep on that diode check as well. Plus, when you're in diode mode, if you short those leads together, yeah, you get that long short. So good job. Output voltage in diode mode is just under 4 volts, 3.9 volts. Right on the side underneath those select switch uh, arrows, we have that USB-C rechargeable port right there. Takes about an hour or so to charge. And uh, yeah, you can't use the meter while you're charging. Okay, we're in DC amps. We're going to be, there we go, 8 amps. And yeah, 8 amps coming up. Looking good. Let's take it up a little. A little bit. Nine amps. And we have a threshold 10 amps. And we're just under 10 amps. Look at that. And oh, it has reset its health. It has gone back down. Didn't have a high current alarm either, did we? Didn't sound like it. And yeah, we're back down into the milliamps now. Okay. Honestly, I wasn't planning on starting the teardown just yet, but I'm a little curious about uh, the fuse and actually it checks out to be fine. But first, look at the fuse. It's an SMD style 10 amp fuse. A little unusual for sure. Going to be harder to source than your standard fuses, but definitely not impossible. And that being said, yeah, the fuse is good. It's good. So all is good in fuse land. Um, haven't seen that before. First time in a multimeter uh, that uh, I'm looking at a SMD 10 amp fuse like that. But hey, always a first. So while we're inside, let's keep on going. Uh, starting off with those inputs. Uh, nicely done. Split connectors, but we have that nice high riser with the plastic inlays. And we have a current shunt in between. Good space. As well as a PTC here on the voltage side. And check it out. We have, of course, our 3 volt relay. Now this is an Uber meter and you can tell by looking at the firmware date, oh, not the firmware, but the, the PCB date, version 1.2.11.06.2024. Wow, that's fresh. Here is where that big 18650 battery will lie across, positive and negative right there, uh, making contact with the PCB and powering the board. Speaking of that battery, there's the reverse side and there are the two connectors that make contact with the battery itself. Yeah, no shielding, but um, nice and clean, solid uh, ABS plastic going on here. Very nice. Moving up a little bit more and check it out. That's where the thermal camera portion of the board comes into play. Hiding in the corner over here at the top, we have our 32-bit micro microcontroller, the ATF32 by Artery. And of course, over there, we have the thermal camera itself, that uh, gorgeous ISR 240 by 240 of thermal pixel goodness. And by the way, here's that macro on the back of the camera itself. So it's just really seamless, built into the plastic chassis. You're not going to lose it. And wow, very nicely done. High speed charging ports, the uh, push buttons, all in all, very nice black PCB, 
clean, 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 no flux, nothing weird or funky going on, just good, solid engineering that looks like a million bucks. All right, put it back together and let's keep on testing. So one thing worth taking note is the fact that we have those um, inserts here, but they're not brass threaded, are they? It's just plastic. So you're screwing into plastic. Look what's happening. That was only one time I removed the backing and it's already starting to look like ugh. brass threaded inserts would have made a huge difference. Hopefully we can see that on an updated version of the meter, but uh, yeah, otherwise long-term wear and tear doesn't bode so well if you have to replace that fuse on any sort of a constant basis. Hopefully not. But, uh, yeah, you can see it does a little bit of damage. Okay, let's take a quick look now at the thermal camera imaging capabilities of the ET14S. Look at that. Look at that image. It is so crisp, so clean. Wow. And it's amazing how they put this tech now into something that is relatively smaller than your hand. How times have changed. Okay, we just switched to macro. And look at the detail now that comes out in the macro mode. Get up and close and personable with those SMD components. Man, they just, they just, wow. It's, it's, it really makes a big difference. If you do any sort of electronic troubleshooting, definitely get the version with the macro uh, capability because um, it's, I think it's like 20 bucks extra and it makes a huge difference for electronic testing. Once again, here we are. This is the non-macro mode. You can see the detail is not nearly as good as macro. Still very nice. You're just not going to get into the nitty gritty, so to speak. Hey, let's try some other things, shall we? Here we are looking at uh, the electrical panel. And once again, lots and lots of detail. Good resolution here with this camera. Same with the uh, hot water tank. I mean, check out the pipes. I mean, the detail is incredible it is so clear oh i just love it love it of course the different color routines give you a, a indicator of what you're looking at uh the wider is the hotter whereas the the darker obviously is cooler so um it's a great camera you know it doesn't get heavy in the hand of course light and you also have that ability with those uh arrows to change your infrared capability lots of different modes i honestly prefer the default it just makes the most sense for my brain um this is kind of a cool one too that red would give you a little uh you know touch zone for heat but uh, overall uh the default one works for me closing thoughts on the two top et14s thermal camp slash multimeter yes and yes well this is one cool camera and a meter i mean as a meter it excels it's quick it's got good range capabilities accuracy everything you can expect in a multimeter not only that Throw in a thermal camera and you're good for just about any job case scenario. Both that gorgeous screen that really pops, eye popping candy doesn't get any better than this. Oh, it is so easy on the eyes. Now, it's not all great. Uh, unfortunately, a couple steps backwards, we no longer have that touch screen. We have to use those side arrows to uh, select ranges. That seems like a step backwards to me. Would have been nice to keep that touch screen going. Just makes it a little easier uh, to work with. That being said though, not a lot negative to say about this. It's just a great all around thermal camera slash multimeter. That tiny SMD 10 amp fuse is uh, a little unusual. Those 10 amp SMD fuses are readily available. Uh, take eBay for instance. I saw them for as low as like $1.36 US. So uh, definitely cheap. Now you've got to throw shipping on top, probably another 10 bucks. But hey, for you know around $12 or so, you can get a replacement fuse. And hey, if you're gonna get one, might as well get a few because you know, you need more than one. Also don't like the fact it doesn't have a threaded inserts. Uh, you need that constant wear and tear on the plastic chassis is gonna create more damage. Not a good thing for long-term wear and tear. 
But hey, that sliding macro makes all the difference in the world when it comes to bench electronics. You want it, you need it. You're gonna get this camera, make sure you get the macro add-on. And hey, eight hours of runtime is nothing to sneeze at. And if you carry an extra 18650 battery, guess what? You're back in the saddle. Having that 18650 easily uh, replaceable like that, bada boom, bada bing, man, oh man. Whoa, good job, tool top. If you need a thermal camera, I think you've come to the right place. The Tooltop ET14S IR camera slash multimeter gets a solid four out of five stars. Hey, great job, Tooltop. You did it again. Keep up the great work. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.